Welcome back to the show, everybody. I wanna do a behind the scenes follow up to the last video that I did, which was my photography lesson with John Free. And John is somebody that I've had an immense amount of respect for, uh, and I've been a big fan of his work and his teaching style for a long time now, for years. And for me to actually have had the opportunity to work with him was really special. And it was a big deal for me. I'm very proud of the way the video came out. I'm really glad that it was well received uh, when I released it as well. And I had a lot of questions on it, and I wanna talk a little bit behind the scenes of how that was put together. So I knew I was going to be in Los Angeles last summer, and so I called John a few months in advance, and I said, you know, hey, John, I'm going to be out, uh, introduce myself, and I said, I want to take a photography lesson with you, um, and the catch is that I actually want to record it and be able to share it with people who watch the show, and surprisingly, John was totally, totally interested in that. So we started kind of talking about strategy of how we wanted to approach that, and one of the things that John said early on to me was that he really wanted the images to somehow be a part of it in the end, and I understand this completely. One of the frustrations when you're teaching, uh, particularly if you work with film, is that a lot of times you're showing people do things and you're demonstrating, but then they can't see the images till you have them processed or made prints or whatever it is you do with them. And so I told John we would definitely do that as we went forward. So anyway, when, after we worked together, about four days after I got back from California, um, I had a FedEx overnight package which contained an envelope with a large stack of five by seven prints that John hand printed in his dark room at home. And for somebody to have gone the extra mile to make something cool like that was, uh, it was very cool to me. And so I wanted to go the extra mile to really get these incorporated well within the final edit. And I didn't know what shape that would take. And so I was trying to think, well, do I hold them up and show their prints or how do we illustrate that? And I ended up just scanning them. But I ended up, as, as, as it worked out, I had B-roll of John making just about all these shots. So I started to incorporate that. So these pictures ended up dictating the final edit. Um, that's when I realized that the whole thing really needed to be in black and white. And I started experimenting from there. And I needed to show, show John shooting those images. So the music took shape after that. And that's kind of how it went forward. And so anyway, so that was really interesting how that collaboration kind of went down through the whole thing. After I put up the video, uh, probably the most asked question that I've got on this so far is what was your biggest takeaway from your time with John as a student and him as a teacher? And it's a hard question to answer, and I'll do my best to answer it. Um, there are so many things that you get from John. John is, is very unique. He is the real deal. He is very genuine. He is cut straight in the path of photojournalism and street photography, and that's what he does. He, he has a very clear definition of what his work looks like, of who he is, how he shoots, how he teaches. And to be able to be around somebody who has that much clarity around what it is they're doing is... Uh, you know, when they're as talented as John is, it's just a very special experience. And I shared a lot of that, um, you know, in that video. And he will split up portions of the lesson where you're walking and talking, and he's talking about various aspects of street photography. And then he actually shows you what he does, and you start shooting after a while. And you kind of go in and out of those two things um, repeatedly throughout the day. And, you know, I think, I don't know if John realizes this, but I think the biggest takeaway for me. You know, you guys have probably seen his YouTube videos. You saw what we did in that one. And John does a lot of talking, but then he walks the walk. And that's where it becomes special, for, or became special for me, at least, as a student, is to just watch him work and observe. Um, you know, for instance, one of the you know, most common problems people have with street photography is their own fear of getting close to people, uh, being afraid that in this day and age when people are suspect of somebody with a camera, you know, how do you respond to that and how do you not let that get in the way? And John has a lot of wonderful advice that a lot of it's shared in the video that we did. But when you start watching him do it, and this is where it became really special to me, is that John, John becomes part of his environment. Um, and I don't know John extremely well. I, I don't know how extroverted he is naturally. But when he's got the camera, he is all over the place. He, he's talking to kids. He's smiling. He's interacting with people. And he becomes part of that environment. And I think that's what allows him to operate within that. So it's one thing, you know, when you hear him talk about it, but then you see him do it. I mean, there were several times where where he was recognized, people up on the pier yelling, hey, John Free, and he'd turn around and wave. And, and you know, it, it was really cool to see him in that environment working and how at home and comfortable he is with that. And so that was a big takeaway from me. Another one, um, and I wanna use some images to talk about this, but, and I don't know, again, if John knows that he does this, but there's a scene that made the final cut of the video where we're standing on the pier looking over that long stretch of sand that goes up towards the water, and John is pointing out things to look for when you're shooting. And he starts shooting, and he starts using card terms like two of a kind, three of a pair, or th sorry, two of a pair, three of a kind. And he's using these kind of card playing terms, which was interesting to me because I think it's an insight to what John is looking for 
in addition to a lot of other things. You know, you're looking to tell a story. You're looking for something that communicates and makes sense. Something that portrays an emotion or humanity or, uh, you know, what it is that you're trying to say through the photograph. But when you find those special moments of things like when he says, you know, a perfect pair or three of a kind, um, what he's referring to are things that you can include in your image. Now, the brain works and the way we, we interpret art or photography when we see it is our brain is very pattern oriented. So that's something that communicates well. So for instance, in this picture, which was one of my favorites um, of these, it was the father-son duo that were under the pier and they had their nets out and they were sifting through the sand. And, you know, they're not identical. It's a father and a son, but they were both two people engaged in activity and that kind of thing, if you can get them in the right moment and depending on what they're doing can communicate a lot and so I thought that was interesting to hear John use terminology like that because it, it makes a lot of sense um, some of the other images that I really liked that he came up with this is one that was on the beach and it was these this woman in a wheelchair but there was two women sitting next to her and they were both just completely dressed in black with these hats on and it was great and he was like oh two of a pair and he starts shooting John will shoot variations as well. It's, it, he looks for the moment and then he pays attention and observes to see if something's going to change over time and this little girl ran through the picture and, and this made a great shot. Another variant on that was when uh, my friend Gary, who was actually doing second camera and helping me shoot it, uh, had leaned into the picture and John made that part of the image and I thought that was a great picture as well. So a lot of times just in my takeaway of watching John is you're looking for moments and then paying attention to see if there's a variation that can happen and I actually intently picked the music that I intentionally picked the music that I did because of that um, in the Beethoven string quartet where, where he's going through some of these motions you hear little um, thematic musical motifs that that work a certain way over a major chord then they transpose into another key sometimes and and there are possibilities that what can happen with a melodic motif musically and so I was trying to show that with John I don't know if it was successful or not but it seemed to work um, another one that was great too is when he was woman in a wheelchair who was looking out over the ocean which is a great shot and using this umbrella in the foreground and how your eyes led through that shot and then another variant on that was there was a woman in a hat and a bathing suit that came up and was she was posing I believe her husband was shooting pictures of her or boyfriend whoever it was and uh, anyway it just made a great shot because right now now you have rather than a card term you have a contrast um, young versus old um, you know your, your metaphors of being on the sea and having that be a metaphor for life on the seashore and anyway wonderful stuff and just to watch John work you know, to me was amazing. And John practices what he preaches. Um, and like I said, he's a very intense character in the very best way possible. And I learned a great deal. Um, it's the kind of thing where I don't feel like I, things were summed up necessarily. It was a wonderful start and it was some things to think about for me to carry forward with my own work. And street photography is something that's not come very natural to me necessarily and it's something that I'm very interested in. A lot of the photographers I look up to are street photographers or photojournalists and so it was a very important lesson for me to to have with John and I'd love to do it again sometime and maybe we can work together on another project in the future. Um, on that note I do want to talk a little bit about the style that that video was in because you know, I, I, there are a lot of different types of videos that I do on the show these days. You know, we do camera reviews, we do uh, photo lit stuff. Uh, you know, we I, I, I do a variety, and and as you guys well know who watch the show regularly, I've been experimenting with that a lot in the last couple months. Um, not everybody likes camera reviews. I totally understand that, but that exposes the show to a new audience. Um, not everybody likes photo lit, but after seeing a few, sometimes you get into that history of things, and so I think there's. There's something in there that kind of speaks to everyone, but just for me on the core of why I do this show, this is what I want to talk about for a minute. You know, when I started the show back in 2008, uh, you know, my goal, there certainly wasn't on anything on television and there certainly wasn't much on the internet either. So I ended up just making the show that I would want to see. And that's, the show's been built around that. And one of the things that it really kind of, I think, comes to its manifest within is when I'm able to do a show like this one I did on John Free. You know, I intentionally was not in that video very much. I do a little bit of narration at the beginning and then you see me in some of the B-roll towards the end, but I, I didn't want my voice to be a big part of that. I wanted it to be all about John. And those are not easy videos to do. <laughs> they are very difficult for a number of reasons. One, um, you know, you're trying to portray somebody else. You're trying to make that interesting uh, for people who are going to watch it. And two, there is the physical expense of 
of flying and traveling to do a video like that. And those are difficult to do. I would love to do nothing but those kinds of shows. I would like to have one of those every week at least. But the logistics of it are prohibitive in a lot of ways. Now, having said that, I'll talk about this in the coming weeks, but one of my goals right now is I'm trying to find ways that might open up to allow for funding to do special projects like this more often because people respond well to them. Um, and I'm not doing them for me or anyone in mind specifically, but I'm doing them for photography as a whole. I think that John is certainly a figure, for instance, who needs to be documented in that way and have a nice video put around him that expresses that. And so I really want to do more of that. I'm very happy that you guys were excited about this video. So I'll talk more in the coming weeks because I've got a couple ideas I'm working on for that. But I just want you guys to know I'd love to do a lot more of those and uh, fully plan on finding a way to do that and make that happen in the future. Also, one other thing I want to mention is Contrast, which is the online magazine companion thing that we're doing to all this. Um, contrast is going to be, no pun intended, a contrast to what we do here with the video show. Um, it's a website that I'm building that's going to come out seasonally and it's going to be a little bit different things that are not as easy to do in video form so portfolios or interviews and that's what I want to do with that um, and as you guys know Squarespace are completely behind the project they are a longtime sponsor of the show and I want to give a special shout out to them once again for making this happen I will have updates on the first release hopefully in the next month. I told you guys fall and we're sticking to that, so hopefully that will be the case. The first run will be online only. Um, maybe one day we'll explore a print version of that as well. But I'm really excited and I will have some content to report on that very soon. Um, and thanks to Squarespace for supporting us on that. If you aren't familiar with Squarespace, the reason I wanted to do this project in Squarespace is Squarespace has all the tools you need to build a website and you don't have to worry about code or whether something works on mobile or any of that stuff. You can just make your content and as they say, build it beautiful. You really can. And anyway, so if you guys have a web project in mind that you'd like to do, please support Squarespace. They are awesome. And go over to their website, squarespace.com. You can sign up for a free account. No credit card required. You just sign up and they give you a, a trial account and you can start building a, a website and see how easy that is to do. If you do want to subscribe, remember I do have a code with the show. The offer code is AOP. That will save you 10% off your subscription. And uh, anyway, um, support Squarespace. They are awesome. And once again, I want to thank Squarespace for not only supporting the online magazine, but also supporting the show here. They've been a wonderful sponsor for years. Anyway, lots of stuff coming up as we move into the fall. I've got a lot of show planning I've been doing because we're going to ramp things up in a very big way. And uh, I'm really excited. And I'm glad you guys enjoyed the video on John Free. And if you have any other questions on my time with John or what we did, uh, feel free to leave a comment below. And once again, thank you. And uh, subscribe, like, share, do all those things. Particularly subscribe because you'll be up to date on all the latest and greatest videos we do here. We'll be getting into more of a schedule as the fall hits. I'm excited about that and lots of good things to come. So once again, I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.